Good morning, this is Sarah, your healthy carnivore in the UK, on day 117 of my last ever restart on the carnivore diet. It is my last ever restart. I am never going back. I'm going to be carnivore forever. So if a video where somebody struggles and has struggled and is now doing it is appealing to you, down to earth, lady next door just sitting in the car rambling about the carnivore diet and her struggles and how she's now winning appeals to you you're in the right place i have had lots of comments um overnight which is which is great you know people want to help me they, they want to suggest things and that is great you know and i love you for it if you're new to this channel this is going to help you understand me and my journey the comments though i need to have are just encouragement to keep going just encourage me to keep going. Tell me that I can do it, that I will do it, that I am going to be successful. Comments such as start tracking, start intermittent fasting, eat more fat, eat less fat, eat more protein, eat less protein, count your calories, do a three-day water fast. All these comments, you know, are just not, not, not what I'm going to do because it's got to the point now where being consistent carnivore and doing that carnivore journey now... I have now just decided I'm a carnival for the rest of my life. So whatever happens to my weight from here on in isn't really any of my business. It's none of my business. Because if you've decided that you're going to do something for the rest of your life and that you are, in fact, a carnival and you're going to do it, it doesn't matter what you weigh. So, um, yeah. So I just want encouragement to say, keep going. You're doing great. You are a perfect carnivore. Not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but you are a permanent carnivore. You are successful. You're committed. You're resigned and you're invested. And this is your time. Comments like that to me are more of what I need. This may be a weight loss channel later on, but I'm not going to weigh myself anytime soon. It's, you know, my friend Bill Knott in Alaska did say to me a few weeks ago, put those scales away don't worry about it because he can see that I'm worried about it he's right anyone that's told me to put the scales away is absolutely correct so I just I just think this video is um a little bit about me a little bit about the journey I'm going on the day of my channel on Sunday and I'm going to have an interview and I want to go strong and I want to start strong so I've been practicing sometimes in the shower um, trying not to think about it in the middle of the night because it will then wake me up while I'm just chatting to myself about what I'm going to say. I found Carnivore back in 2014, which is 10 years ago. It was in December that I discovered it. Um, I was in a bit of a mess um, with my... I could have been in more of a mess. And if I hadn't found Carnivore, I think I would have continued to become more of a mess. But many of my friends were already pre-diabetic at that point. I, you know, I had quite a large waistline, um, but I had gastritis that was quite bad with regular flare-ups. I had psoriasis with regular flare-ups, um, insomnia, wasn't sleeping, lots of different things happening to me. I was 38 at the time, now 48, and I absolutely, 100% truly believe that if I hadn't found carnival when I did, I would have been in more of a mess, way heavier, way more sick, probably on some kind of medication by now, um... So it frightens me. It frightens me to think of not being carnivore, okay? Before I tell you how I found the carnivore, let's tell you just a little bit more about my channel and what to expect if you're new. Sometimes we get a bit of singing and I do this. <coughs> yeah, that's what this channel's about. Sometimes if I'm feeling really down, I might put my bunny ears on and cheer myself up and cheer you up. So we know that this is an optimistic channel and a bit crazy but I don't mind there is gonna be on day 125 there's gonna be a lot of this <laughs> but we're only on day 117 so let's just talk about how I found carnival because it was a time when when it wasn't all big and trendy you know we didn't have I mean YouTube had been invented but I had I don't think I'd even really heard of it much other than my son used to watch um, Monster Trucks videos on there. It wasn't big on YouTube if it was on there at all. And mostly there were just a few of us in little forums and Facebook groups. And I was on Twitter at the time, which is now called X. What a cesspit that place is. I don't use Twitter anymore or X or whatever they're going to change its name to next. 
I think it's a cesspit. But I was just happened to be on there. I happened to be connected up with the husband at the time of Amber O'Hearn. Um, if you've been to the carnival any length of time, you'd have heard of Amber O'Hearn. She's the one that's um, she's a pioneer. She, um, now, bearing in mind that was 10 years ago, so she's probably now been doing it somewhere between probably 14 and 20 years. I can't remember at this moment in time what her grand total is, but it's good. And her husband was on there. And um, I'd, I was going on there declaring that I'd made some health changes and I'd given up sugar and I'd given up wheat. Some of you have heard this before, but I'll say it anyway for the new people. Some, I, um, I, He said to me, well, it's incredible that you've given up sugar and wheat, but what else are you prepared to give up? And I'm thinking... Nothing, really. Happy with the way things are going. Because I was 10 years younger, I lost quite a lot of weight just doing that. <laughs> 10 years on, my body's got wise to that and it won't lose weight for anything. But never mind. It will catch up when it starts to trust me, okay? Um, and then just fell in the keto pit um, very quickly. I, was very, I remember being really concerned about it for the first couple of days. What's going to happen to my cholesterol? Blah, blah, blah. But luckily, I managed to stumble on the right people. I managed to find, um, you know, Zoe Harkham and others, people that were super, super smart. Nina Teicholtz. You know, just, I'd luckily just stumbled on the right people who were able to give me the right information right straight away so I didn't have to spend ages. Oh, I don't want to do that. That sounds dangerous. I was straight in there. And then within a couple of weeks, I was doing carnival. And I realised, and it blew me away. I was amazed. It blew me away because I couldn't believe. <clears throat> I did spend a couple of years really angry after discovering Carnival that we've been lied to, that everyone is being lied to on a daily basis for profit and power and control. And to, and to, I, I believe all humans really especially in the modern world, should really be living to over 100. And we're not, are we? You know, we've all got the grandparent that lived to the 90s, but now we're hearing of people conking out in their 80s and then 70s and then 60s, and now we're hearing about it in their 50s. <sighs> Do I think it's deliberate? I'd rather not say, but I think there's a lot of profit to be made in sick people, and this is where we've ended up. And so I did spend the next two years after finding Carnival incredibly angry. I still can't go into a supermarket without seeing things, feeling frustrated, getting cross. My dieting history before that was basically just spending about 20 years on the low fat, low diet train. I was a slimming consultant for four years, which I hate. I hate that because I was then in a position of promoting the fruits and the veg and the whole grain. Um, I did do a video when I very first started this channel, Confessions of an Ex-Slimming Consultant. I recommend that video. In fact, I might pop it under here if I remember. If I forget, I'm so sorry. It's going to be a long day at work today. And by the time I get home, I've probably forgotten that I've said that. So I'm going to have to now watch the video over again and pop that video in the description. But it's it was not difficult to find. It's just confessions of an ex-slimming consultant and my declaration to apologise to everyone whose hormones I ruined, whose metabolism I ruined, whose guts I ruined. I am feel so bad that I contributed to that, but I can't do anything about it now. Um, like I said, I'm very open to feedback on any comments, um, but please don't call me a liar. You can say whatever you want to me, but please don't call me a liar. Because everything I do is absolutely out there, transparent, okay? Butter is back in my life. I did say I was bringing it back. I have brought it back. Um, I'm just seeing how it affects me. I'm looking at whether it affects my mood, whether it affects my psoriasis, whether it affects other things. Um, so this is another reason why it's probably best not to weigh in anymore because it's a, there's a possibility it might put my weight up a little tiny bit and I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Let it go. Don't worry. I'm not breaking into song today. Um, so why did I set up the channel when I hadn't actually, when, when I was, you know, some people will say, why did you set up a channel when you were struggling, not losing weight? Okay, what, there's two reasons. One, I figured that I could probably get some support. I figured that there would probably be some people that really would just take pity on me. <laughs> support me and cheer me on and they do and 
tuning into this video every morning has got me 217 days without a hitch. So that's good. The other reason is the war on meat. I cannot stand the war on meat, how they will literally stop at, they, they will literally stop at nothing to scare us away from meat, put us off meat. When you look back to all the events over the last 10, 20, 30 years where they've tried to make up stuff. Yes, make up stuff. Those images, um, if you live in the UK, I don't know whether this happened in other countries, I only know about the UK, but when we had um, what was termed mad cow disease, right? We had mad cow disease and hundreds upon thousands of cows were burnt in fields. It put a lot of people off meat. It didn't put my grandmother off meat. She carried on because she was just smart and she's who I take after. Do I think I'm smart? Not necessarily smart, but curious and open-minded enough to go down rabbit holes and find the truth. I'm not someone that's just going to walk past a, a newspaper stand, look at a headline and go, oh, I'm going to do that. No. I've always had a very open-minded... If someone ever gives me any information, I will always say, that's really interesting, thank you. I'm going to look into that. And I will look into it. The amount of times I've told people about carnivore and the powers of meat and the powers of, um, you know no profit in healthy people and the glazed eye expression you get that glazed eye oh. they've got it's, it's you know it's the old cliche it literally has gone in that ear and it has come out that ear you could tell them something really amazing into that ear and it's going to come out there straight away calm calm and they're not going to look into it. They're not going to look into it. Anyway, so long, low-fat, low-calorie dieting history, completely trashed hormones and metabolism, a body that doesn't trust me. Even the last 10 years, I've got myself into a state where now my body hates me even more. It loves me today because this is my longest cleanest stretch of carnivore and um i think my body is thinking oh i think she might be doing it i think she's actually doing it keep doing it and it's sending me good messages because when it's time to eat all i'm thinking about is meat now is that the fact that i've been doing a lot of positive speaking to myself knocking that baby voice out of my head and just being the adult or is it that just my chemistry is changing to the point now where my body's just get the meat, get the meat. I think it's a bit of both. If I'm hungry during the day, um, <laughs> I force myself, not force myself, it's pretty easy to do. I instantly start thinking about meat on purpose so that my that those connections in my brain are thinking, She's she's thinking about me. She's thinking about me. And when I'm hungry, I instantly make sure that I'm thinking about meat so that moving forward into the future, whenever I'm hungry, my brain is going, get some meat, get some meat. You can retrain a brain. You can tell your, your brain little stories. So, yeah. Um, this will be my second interview on Dave Mack and the last one was very much talking about my nine and a half year imperfect journey. I can't even listen to that stuff now. I cannot listen to it. It's just too depressing. Not just depressing, but desperate. Depressing and desperate and dreary. Um, though when I have learned how to do a reaction video, if anyone can tell me how to do a reaction video quite simply with easy steps and what software I need, let me know because at some point in the future, I will want to do a reaction video to one of my previous videos and look back on it and say, listen to my voice, listen to the things I was saying, hear the desperation in my voice. I don't want to go back to that and I have long since passed that point this morning. I was having my breakfast and I just thought, wow, I really have gone way past that point of quitting. 
way past. It's so far in the distance, it's a dot to me now. The thought of going back to that desperation and, and depression and dreariness, it's just, I cannot, I won't. I absolutely won't. So this is a little story about me. This is my kind of previous history carnivore. The carnivore journey bit is, there's a bit more to it than that. In that um, my mum features in my carnivore journey. A positive and a negative. The positive part of um, my mother's terrible health and subsequent um, passing is that um, she's tra taught me what not to do. Because I only remember her being sick. I only remember her problems. And I don't want to go back. I don't want to go through that. It's terrifying. What she went through was terrifying. I don't want to go to that. The downside of it was our life was so chaotic with hospital treatments and, and me staying over at her house and taking care of her on various different occasions that I did end up getting distracted from my own carnival journey and not looking after myself. Um, I'm now in a position where I can do it properly and not get distracted. And now that I've gone over the 100 days, I won't allow myself to be distracted. It's done, it's finished. So, yeah, that's just a little story about me. I was advised to put out a couple of shorts. Somebody mentioned um, last night that one of my videos was good and to put a couple of shorts out there. I am going to... I am going to talk more about the science um, and how there isn't any. But that means that when a art news article comes up and says new study shows. Which one? Have you noticed in these newspaper articles, there's never a link to the actual science ever. So I'm going to be doing more of that. I think... I'm going to, you know, just do some research online to look at mainstream articles that say new study shows and go from there because they never, ever show you any link to any study. And I would read it. Now we're not near at the end. I'm just going to say one other thing about me that you may have missed in my previous videos in that I've only mentioned this once before and I'll mention it one more time in this one. And I probably won't mention it again because it's not extremely relevant, but I do have a university degree I do have a bachelor of science the reason I haven't mentioned it before in my videos is because it's not it, the subject I did was of no relevance to nutrition so it, it didn't seem important to bring it up but you know I do have a degree background I have got a fully functioning brain but luckily my fully functioning brain is highly open highly questioning and highly critical Back in 2014, my mind exploded to the lies and the corruption and the... <sighs> and sadly, 85 to 90% of people just automatically believe all the lies and corruption. And, and these channels are here to break that down. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a what I eat in the day because it started to become a bit of a... A regular routine for me now I haven't done a what I eat in a day video before because what I eat is so random it's what I can, what meat I can get my hands on and each day is, is is different really because I'll eat things in a different order and sometimes I'll have bacon and egg and sometimes I'll have mince and some ground beef and other things and sometimes I'll have king prawns and sometimes I won't so there isn't a standard routine but I'm going to try and get a standard routine going um you know beef butter bacon and eggs for breakfast and probably pork belly and chicken thighs for dinner and that seems to be getting into a routine with me now so if that starts to settle in I will do a what I eat in a day video as well so thank you very much for listening um Somebody else has asked me to do a video on comparing keto to carnivore, which will probably be my next one. That will probably be my Saturday video. Um, and really talking about why I've chosen carnivore over keto for myself personally. It's up to you. It's up to you how you eat. No one's telling you how to eat. Whatever you do, just do whatever it takes to be healthy and happy. Doing your best looks different every day. Um, if you get, can I get some sun, go and get it. And um, 
just thrive and thank you so much for listening take care bye